Today, our class, it is a continuation from the previous one, which is about X-ray of the lower extremities. We already finished the ankle, tibia, and fibula, and today we will move toward the knee. Uh, as you know, as anatomical part, uh, the knee is composed, this is a model of the knee, which is soft tissue equivalent model. Uh, it is made of synthetic bone and soft tissue. And you know, guys, that the knee joints composed of mainly from three bones, which is the lower part of the femur and the tibia and the fibula. Of course, the joint is covered by a sesamoid bone, we call it the patella. And those are the main parts of the knee joint. And it is very important when we are doing x-ray for the knee to be sure that the joint is open that can easily be seen if there is any pathologies or problems inside or, in the, of course, the joint should be open clearly at the x-ray front. Then, now we move how the x-ray, it will be, or the position of the knee should be done. And before we start now, we have to prepare the cassette, which is we're going to use 8 by 10 cassette. And we have to be sure that the cassette is aligned with the x-ray tube, as well as the size of the cassette, which is match the size of the knee joints. And students, you have to be sure that the tube side of the cassette should be toward the x-ray film. And this is how we do the line we have. Then you have to look at that notch here, should match with the center of the cassette, and then fix the cassette because we don't want to be the cassette to move and to cause any motion artifacts to other image. Then we have to be sure that the center of the cassette is matching with the center of the X-ray tube. I see the light up here down to the center. Maybe just move it a little bit. Now it is too busy. As you know that the knee joint, we can do two basic view, which is anterior, posterior, or AB and lateral. Today we will do just the AB for the knee joint. Now, we already set the cassette. Now, the X-ray tube, we have also to be sure that the distance from the X-ray tube to the table, which is we call it as ID, around 40 inches. Okay. Now, the X-ray tube is sitting, the cassette is all right, now we are going back to the model. As you know, it is very important to position the knee joint in a proper position because in a proper position that means it is easy to open the joint and see the joint from the inside. And to be or to put the knee joint in a proper position, we have two here anatomical landmarks which is the medial and the lateral epicondyle processes. And those epicondyles, it should be equal distance from the X-ray table. And the distance from this, the middle one, to the table should be at the equal distance from the other one. By this measurements, actually, we have to be sure now that the knee joint, it's not rotated. And it not rotated means that good image equality will be produced by just notice those two epicondyle distance should be equal from the x-ray table. Now we are sure that the knee is extended. Then the position or the, uh, the limb is fully positioned without any movement. Then we have to do the centering point. The centering point is very important to center just about 1.3 centimeters below the apex of the knee. Collimation also should be used, you know that collimation is very important to get very proper and good image without any artifacts or any foggy on the films, as well as not to expose the patient and other parts for unnecessary radiation. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to decide uh, 
how much the angle should be used when we are doing uh, knee joint x-ray actually. It's very important or tips just sometimes to determine the angulation that used for x-ray of the knee of the uh, knee joints we have to measure the thickness of the pelvis where to measure the area or oh, sorry to measure from the anterior superior iliac process to the this to the top of the table and if this distance below than 19 centimeters that means we can use the angulation between three and five degrees toward the feet. While if it is 19, that means we can, we don't need to use any angulation. We keep the X-ray tube perpendicular with the knee joints. But if this distance more than 19, between 19 and 24, that means the thickness of the pelvis is that high we use the angulation five to three to five degrees, which is, should be toward the head or cephalic. And this is the knobs that we are using. This one maybe it should be used just to move it all the way around. This is up and down, and this is for angulation. And for the knee joint, we use this knob actually because we need to angulate the tube for the, uh, when we are doing knee uh, X-ray. Now the angulation, as I said, it's between three to five uh, degrees. Now just to press the knob and just move the x-ray tube slowly and gently to be sure that this is the angle which is around 5 degree to be angulated. And we have to be sure that, sorry, we have to be sure that the centering point is exactly still the same 1.3 centimeters below the bottom. While we are doing the angulation, just to be sure that still we have the same center between the X-ray tube and the cassette, we have to do the check again and to move the cassette and the bucket to be sure that it's exactly aligned with the X-ray beam. And after that, now we have to be sure again that the position is all right and the X-ray is aligned with the IR or the image receptor. Then we will go back and do our exposure. Of course, a proper technique it should be used to use a proper Kelly electron volts and the proper MES. Of course, now we are using the automatic exposure that can be adjusted from the bat and the operating console. You know, after we finished the X-ray for the knee, we send the film to the X-ray uh, processor. Then we process the film. Now we get the hard copy for the knee joints. It's very important for you guys to decide or to evaluate your film, to evaluate your, your work. Is it okay or not okay? Is it matching the film critique we, could, we have learned or not? There is several landmarks we have to be sure that. Okay, look at the knee joint here, how nice it's open, which is very important. That's why we've done the angulation, just to be sure that this joint is open. And this joint, as you see, it is, we call it the, of course, the femoral tibial joint. And look at the distance from here, up there, and from the other side, you find it's almost equal distance. And this is very important to decide and to evaluate your knee image. If those distances are equal, that means our image is okay. If it's not equal, that means it's rotated. But in this case, look at the distance almost in here and in there, it's almost the same distance. Now, as a conclusion, in this image we have the knee joint is extended, the battle is superimposed with the femur, the femoral tibial joint is equal distance from both sides, and the soft tissue as well is there. Plus the collimation of the X-ray beam, that means the image is well collimated, which is to protect the patients from unnecessary radiation that could be exposed to.